Hey guys, I'm Lauren and in today's video I'm going to be showing you exactly how I turned my DIY rock into live rock ready for my tank. I've had one of you ask me just to give a little bit more information around it so hope this video helps a little bit. Fun fact, I actually made about 90% of the rock in the tank behind me so I had the honour and the privilege of telling my work colleagues on a Monday morning when they asked what I got up to on the weekend that I made rocks. So yeah, if you guys have anything similar where, you know, your work colleagues or family members or friends think you're an absolute ningbat for, uh, you know, doing what you do, let me know in the comment section below. I absolutely love it. And I guess it's only us aquarium people that will fully understand, uh, I guess, how much, you know, fun it is to make rocks on the weekend. You know, friends are going out partying and I'm making some rocks, so living it up anyway i saved a heap of money if you haven't watched that video go and check it out in this link up here i'll leave the link up there there's a part one and a part two so check out the part one i show you exactly how i made it so if you're interested in saving an absolute ton of money go and check those videos out first and then come back and watch this one so you can understand i guess how i got to this point so here's a piece of rock that i made after that video so as you can see, it's, you know, it just looks like a piece of cement really. Uh, but if you have a look behind me, I'm actually going to show you some video now of what the rock looked like when I first put it into the tank. It looked a lot like this, but as you can see now, it's all got, you know, beneficial bacteria growing all over it and it's starting to get that coralline algae growing on it. So it's all going to end up looking the same. I mean, you can go and get those that dye, that purple dye that you can actually dye the rock with to make it look like it's established. Uh, but I didn't bother with that. It only took a couple of months for it to look like the rest of the rock anyway. So show you what it looked like now when I first popped it in the tank. Since then it's become live rock but before it can even get to the point of going into the tank we have to cure it first. So when you make your own live rock you put heaps of salt into the mix because in that curing process the salt's going to dissolve and make lots of little pores throughout the rock which is exactly what you want for a live rock because you want it to be super porous so that uh, all the water can get through it and uh, create that surface for beneficial bacteria to grow on. So you want to make sure that you cure for long enough that the salt will dissolve because otherwise if you chuck it straight in your tank, your salt levels will probably go through the roof uh, if it's still leaching from the rock. So you're wanting to put it in some water and make sure that you're leaching all of that salt out and making sure you're getting rid of that completely and also any excess stuff that you have from your cement or your sand you're just wanting to sort of let that all settle and get any of that out before you chuck it into your tank right. as far as i'm concerned there's three different ways that you can cure your rocks so if you don't have fish or corals you can put your rock straight in your display tank and start the curing process in the tank. Number two, which is what I did, is setting up a tub outside. And I actually did it, you can do it with fresh or salt water, but I did it with fresh water and cure the rock in a, in a tub outside. And number three is you can go and chuck it in a stream or out in the ocean somewhere where you'll remember to go and find them and cure them that way. That's the three different ways that you can do it. So I chose to do it the second way because I already had fish and corals and I already had some live rock in here and I couldn't put it straight in there anyways. So I chose the second way and I didn't choose the third way of going and putting it in the ocean because I'd probably forget where I put it. And for some weird reason, I was worried that someone would go and <laughs> take it. I don't know, that was just my irrational fear that someone would go and find my rocks that I'm trying to cure and take them. Right, so I'll show you exactly how I did mine. Um, I'll take you outside now and show you how I set it up. All I do is put my rocks in a bucket outside and I fill it up with RODI water or reverse osmosis water. Um, I use that because if you've got a TDS meter, which my reverse osmosis system came with, um, you'll notice that tap water often has chlorine and all sorts of other stuff that's already pollutants in the water. and 
it will actually suck out all the excess stuff out of the rocks a lot quicker if the water doesn't already have you know a whole bunch of stuff in it anyway um, so that's why I use either reverse osmosis or RODI water because there's next to none contaminants in it so it's actually going to be sucking out all the stuff out of the water a lot easier than if the water is already contaminated with stuff in it. So I fill up my bucket with water and every day I'll tip this water out and fill it up with fresh RO or RODI water and keep doing that. So the one thing you're going to be looking for is that the pH stays the same when you keep the rocks in there and that's how you'll know that they're cured is when they're not affecting the water's pH anymore. So, so every day you're replacing the water and then after about a month you can start testing just some normal water. Just some normal so water. Just test that pH in the normal water and then test the pH in your bucket in the water and see if the rocks are affecting the pH. If they are, then they're not cured yet. And if they aren't, then you know your rocks are cured. So you just leave them in the water, keep changing out the water every day. And then when they stop affecting the pH of the water, you know that they're cured. Something else you can do to speed up the process as it can take sometimes a few weeks up to a few months for it to cure is you can put a power head into the bucket and just let that surface agitation help. It actually helps to get all that stuff out of the rock a lot quicker as well. So if you do want to speed up the process, chuck a power head in there as well. Make sure it's creating heaps of surface agitation and that'll also speed up the process, but do continue to just empty out the water because every time you're emptying out the water, you're getting rid of all that, you know, salt and all the stuff that was in the rock. You're getting that out filling it up with fresh RO or RODI water and that's going to be fresh to soak it all out again. So I hope that sort of makes sense. All right, so once it's cured, you can go ahead and put that piece of rock or pieces of rock into your tank. And once they're in there, make sure that you're running it at the right temperature that you're going to be planning on running your tank, just so as it's, you know, becoming live rock, it's already in the exact environment that you're hoping to have it in for the rest of its life in there. So definitely make sure it's sitting at the right temperature. And then all there's left to do is to make it live rock. And the easiest way to do that is if you've got a local pet shop near you, you can go and purchase just a little piece of live rock. Or sometimes if they're really nice, they might just give you a little piece of live rock rubble or something that's already got that beneficial bacteria that you want to introduce into the tank um, growing on it and that will seed to your new rock so as long as you've got you know your temperature and you're not running it cold it won't you know as long as it's all pretty much very similar to what it was already in you can just put it into your tank and it'll seed to your new rock and it'll already have those things growing on it that need to transfer over to your new rock. If you have no access to getting some, you know, always check on your Facebook pages. They've got, you know, I'm sure people would be happy to sell you if they have to, just a tiny piece of live rock. That's the easiest way to do it. So highly recommend doing it that way. Otherwise, if you don't have any access to that sort of stuff, It'd be the case of putting it in your tank and adding in sources of ammonia. So little, you know, little bits of food or you can get those um, like prime and those sort of things that are artificial uh, adding ammonia into the tank to sort of jumpstart the cycle. It's all about adding stuff to your tank. If you can't get hold of a piece of live rock, it's about adding, you know, tiny bits of food to you know start that ammonia cycle um you know i guess the bacteria cycle that uh is going to happen and um start that you know the beneficial bacteria growing on all the surfaces of your rock but yeah it is way easier if you can just get hold of a piece of live rock and that's what i did with my tank i already had some pieces of rock that i'd already bought from a pet shop they were already live rock so it was super easy i literally just chucked it in and let it do it, let it do its thing. That's basically how I did it for my DIY rock. And yeah, it's been going really good and it's actually at the point where it's starting to grow coralline algae on it. So yeah, 
I hope that's helped answer some questions there. And yeah, if you are new to my channel, definitely like and subscribe and turn on the bell so you're notified when I'm uploading new videos. And I am on Instagram as well. So definitely if you're wanting more daily updates, go and follow me on Instagram as well. But yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.